Um, so let's go ahead and, and get started. Raphael, you're welcome to start sharing your screen and we're looking forward to learning from you today. Okay, perfect. Uh, hi everybody and uh, thank you Kane for the introduction and to giving me the opportunity uh, to present this work that has been published at the end of last year uh, in the Journal of Extracellular Vesicle, and which is about the pharmacological inhibition of sentinel PDZ2 domain that impairs breast cancer cell activities and exosome loading with Sandecan and Epcam cargo. This work has been done in collaboration between two teams in the CRCM in Marseille, the team of Pascal Zimmerman, where I belong to, and the team of Xavier Moret. As you all know, in cancers, protein-protein interaction for multiple signaling modes, as illustrated here, which promote tumor progression, invasion, and later metastasis. That's why targeting protein-protein interaction have emerged as a potential approach for the cancer treatment. And this kind of strategy was notably used to target the MDM2 P63 complex. Indeed, wild type P63 uh, is known to act as a tumor suppressor, and in 40% of all the tumors, there is a dysregulation of MDM2 expression, which is involved in the degradation of P63. And in order to restore its uh, uh, tumor suppressor activity and to avoid its degradation, targeting this complex uh, with a lot of uh, small chemical compounds uh, was successful, actually. And this is the reason why the targeting of this complex and the, of this interaction was really a major breakthrough in the field of PPY targeting. And in our study, we wanted to target, oh, sorry, we wanted to target uh, the sentinel one. So sentinel-1 is a scaffolding protein that owns two PDZ domains, PDZ1 and PDZ2, and uh, both of them are involved in protein-protein interaction, and especially with membrane receptors, such as sandecans, Frizzel 7 or IL-5 receptor alpha, for instance. More recently, our laboratory and others have shown that the sentinel and terminal domain can also interact with uh, other protein, other proteins, such as Alix, SCAR protein, or SOX4, and thanks to all these interactions, sentinel is involved um, in the activation of several transduction pathways, such as cell adhesion, cytoskeletal organization, receptor protein trafficking, or synapsomation. In addition, our laboratory has also shown that sentinel can regulate uh, the biogenesis and the uptake of a specific population of exosomes. The exosome, as you all know, I think, is this kind of small extracellular vesicle of endocytic origin with a diameter between 30 to 150 nanometers. They are loaded with protein, nucleic acid, sorry, and lipids that are specific from the cell of origin. And it's now well accepted that the transfer of this material to a receiving cells will alter and will change the fate of the receiving cells. And in our laboratory, we have demonstrated that the interaction between the sentinel PDZ2 domain and the C-terminal domain of Sandecan form a complex. And this complex is involved in all the steps of the exosome biogenesis. Thanks, uh, with the help of uh, Eperanas and Alix, they are involved in endosomal sorting. Thanks to their interaction with R6 and PLD2, they are involved in the formation of multivesicular bodies and then to exosomal releases. In a breast cancer cell model, we have demonstrated that these two processes were mediated by SARC oncogene. And the last study of our lab, the last publication of our lab, was about the complex Santenin and Sandecan, which is involved also in the internalization of the exosome within the receiving cells. Interestingly, Santenin-1 is highly expressed and reactivated in several types of solid tumors, such as lung carcinoma, melanoma, glioblastoma, breast or prostate cancers. And you can notice that the high expression of Santenin is correlated with tumor progression, invasiveness, and the risk of metastasis notably. Because Santenin can control several cancer pathways, such as SARC, GFR, and FKPA B, and others, and then it plays a role in invasion, proliferation, and angiogenesis notably. Very recently, it has been shown that Santenin can also regulate the cancer stem cell function, especially in glioblastoma and prostate cancers. That's why the aim of our study was to develop a Santenin PDZ inhibitor in uh, order to investigate their benefit to control the cancer cellular phenotypes on one side and also to control the exosomal releases. 
In that respect, we started the collaboration long time ago with a company called Enamin, which provides us uh, a library of a small chemical compounds targeting specifically the, all the PDZ domains. We firstly perform an in silico selection, a random selection, and a selection based on the X ray crystallography of the centenine. And we could identify 139 small compounds that could potentially target the centenine PDZ domains. These compounds were screened by using the HT ref essay. So, this is a very simple experiment. We put in solution the GST centenine one together with a biotinylated peptide. So, in our case, it was Sandecon 2 or Frizzle 7 that are known to directly interact with centenine. And we added an antibody targeting the GST centenine coupled with a donor and the streptavidin that will target the peptide and coupled with an acceptor. And if there is an interaction, there will be a transfer of energy that will be catched by the machine. And we check for the ability of all these compounds to disrupt the interaction and then to disrupt the transfer of energy. Interestingly, uh, as we can note on this uh, volcano plot, five compounds that are structurally similar, actually, were able to partially disrupt the interaction between Santenin and Senecon 2, and also between Santenin and Frizzle 7. The best compound was the compound 58, which showed a percentage of inhibition for Santenin and Senecon 2 of 62%, and for Santenin and Frizzle 7 of 42%. So we decided to continue our study by using this specific compound. First, the co-crystallography of uh, the compound 58 together with the centenine was resolved. And we could observe that the compound 58 specifically binds the centenine PDZ2 domain and in the exact same pocket than the Sandicon 2 peptide. By using the same HTRF essay than before, but in those response, we could determine the EC15 of the compound 58, and we have used the Sandicon 2 peptide as a control for the experiment. However, you could also notice that the EC15 of the compound 58 was 10 times higher than the EC15 of the Sandicon 2 peptide. Anyway, we confirm a direct interaction between the compound 58 and the Santenine by performing the echo essay. And you can notice on this graph, there is a dose dependent interaction of the compound 58 with the centenine PDZ tandem. So taken together, all this result shows that the compound 58 specifically binds the centenine PDZ2 domain and partially disrupts the interaction between centenine and Senecon 2 interaction. So we decided to test our compound in cellulose in our breast cancer cell uh, model, MCF7, and also in our MCF7 that are depleted for centenine expression at the control. We deliterated our cells with an increasing concentration of compound 58 and with compound one, which, uh, what, which was uh, off target control. And 48 hours later, we checked for the cell survival by using the 7AAD and Excel type kit that allow to differentiate the cells that are alive from the cell in early or in late apoptosis. And as you can notice on this picture or on this graph, whatever uh, the cells express or not the centenine, the compound 50A does not affect the cell survival, which means that our compound was not cytotoxic in cellulose at a concentration up to 100 micromoles. As centenine is involved in a cancer cell migration, we check the effect of the compound 58 in this kind of wound delaying essay. So we perform a 24 hour treatment with the compound 58 or with vehicle, and we check for the cell migration. And as you can notice on this picture or on this graph, there is a significant decrease in, a cell in a MCF7 cell migration in the presence of the compound 58. Then we perform the same experiment, but with our MCF7 depleted for centenine expression. And as you can notice on the picture or on the quantification, the compound 58 does not affect the migration of the cells, which means that the compound 58 can impair the MCF7 cell migration, but the effect of the compound 58 was really specific to the centenine expression. As I explained to you in the introduction, centenine can also uh, regulate uh, the cancer stem cell function, and it was the case in glioblastoma and in prostate cancers. And we wanted to check whether it was also the, the same effect in our MCF7 breast cancer model. 
So what we do, we took the MCF7 cells and the MCF7 depleted for certain expression. We detached them and we put the exact same number in a specific media where only the cancer stem cell can differentiate and form this kind of mammosphere which means that one mammosphere is a reflect of one cancer stem cell. And you can notice on this, picture, on this picture or on this graph that there is a 50% decrease of the number of mammosphere when there is a depletion of the sentinel expression. So we wanted to check whether the compound 58 could affect this phenomenon. We perform a 24 hours pretreatment with the compound 58 or with a vehicle, and we check for the number of mammosphere. And you can notice that the compound 58, a pretreatment with the compound 58, significantly decreases the number of mammosphere, which means that our compound is able to affect the cancer stem cell function of the MCF7. So taken together, we have demonstrated that the compound 58 was active in cellulose and was able to affect the cancer cell activities of the MCF7. However, we could also notice that the compound was only active at a high concentration of 100 micromolar, and the EC15 of the compound 58 was 10 times higher than the EC15 of the Sandecon 2 peptide. So the aim of uh, our study was to really improve the affinity of this compound to the Sentinel PZ2 domain. And this is what we have, uh, what we try actually with this heat optimization thanks to the co-crystallography of the compound 58 and the Sentinel, the biochemist and the bioinformatician could identify three hotspots that can be changed on the structure of the compound 58 in order to increase its affinity. A lot of uh, compound 58 analogs were uh, designed and developed, and uh, we tested them by using the same HTRFSA than before, and we could identify one compound called Santoff which show a different length of paper with one more atom of carbon. And by using the same HTRFSA than before, we could determine its EC15. And we could notice that the EC15 of the Santoff compound is 10 times better than the EC15 of the compound 58, and it's very close to the EC15 of the Sandecon 2 peptide. So it was a very good optimization. We proceed the same way than before. We firstly confirm a direct interaction between our center compound uh, with the Santenin PZ tandem. And you can notice that the center of does dependently bind the Santenin PZ domain and very more efficiently than the compound 58. Finally, we perform the co-crystallography of the Santoff compound together with the Santenin, and we could notice that the Santoff uh, is able to specifically bind the Santenin PDZ2 domain in the exact same pocket that the compound 58 and then the Sandicon 2 peptide. So we decided to test uh, our Santoff compound in our cancer uh, essays, actually. We firstly check for the cytotoxicity of the compound in the MCF7 and MCF7 depleted for sentinel expression. And you can notice that the Santoff, such as the compound 58, does not affect at all the cell survival of both cell lines. So we decided to test the Santoff in our mammosphere formation assay by using the MCF7 cells. And we try different concentration of the Santoff compound. So we did a pretreatment of the cells for 24 hours. We detached them and we put them in the specific media for mammosphere. And we could notice that the compound was still active uh, on the number of mammosphere. And uh, fortunately for us, we could also notice that the compound was active from 50 micromolar, which was a very good improvement compared to the compound 58. We finally performed the exact same experiment, but with the MCF7 depleted for sentinel expression, a pretreatment with Santoff of or with a vehicle, actually. And you can notice that the Santoff or the control, the number uh, of mammosphere is exactly the same, which means that the Santoff can affect the cancer stem cell activity, but only when there is sentinel expression. So the Santoff effect is really specific to the sentinel expression. So we have demonstrated that our compound 58 and our Santoff compound can affect the MCF7 cancer cells activity, and it was dependent on the Santenin expression. But in our lab, we are working uh, with exosome and on the Santenin exosomal pathway, and wanted to check if those inhibitors, the Santenin PDZ2 inhibitors, could affect the exosomal release. And this is what we have done. Sorry. Up. 
And this is what we wanted to do actually. And we firstly check for the secretion of uh, the exosome. So um, in a previous study of our lab, it was shown that a loss of santenin in MCF7 model leads to a 50% reduction in the number of exosomes. So we wanted to check whether this santenin PDZ inhibitors could affect the number or the size of the exosome. For this experiment, we have used a PLD2 inhibitor, the Keman, uh, this Keman inhibitor, because we have demonstrated that this inhibitor affects the secretion of all exosomal markers, actually. So what we did is this simple experiment. We performed a treatment of the MCF7 cells in a media with serum depleted for exosomes. And we treated the cells with Centoff, with c -Centoff, which is the off-target um, control, the compound 58, or the PLD2 inhibitor. 24 hours later, we collected the exosome, and we have isolated the exosome. We collected the supernatant, sorry, and we have isolated the exosome by performing ultra centrifugation step. And we check for the size and the number of the exosome by nanocyte analysis. First, you can note that the PLD2 inhibitor significantly affects the number of the nanoparticles secreted, but not the size, really. And surprisingly, we found that neither the compound 58 or the center of compound affect the number of the exosome or the size of the exosome, unlike uh, what we have already shown with SIRNA strategy. So it was a little bit surprising. Then, we wanted to check whether the Centoff or the compound 58 uh, could affect uh, the loading into the exosome. So we performed the exact same experiment with a 24-hour treatment. We collected the supernatant and we have isolated the exosome by ultracentrifugation. But this time, we checked by Western blood analysis for the exosomal markers. We firstly check for the santenin-dependent exosomal markers, such as Sandecon4, Santenin, Alix, or CD63. And as you can notice on this Western blood analysis, when first, when we use the PLD2 inhibitor, there is a decrease of the exosomal markers as expected. And which uh, something what, uh, which was very good for us, we, when you take a look on the Centoff, actually, you can note that the Centoff significantly affects the loading of Santenin, of Alix, and CDN Sandecom4. Then we wanted to check whether the Centoff could affect also all uh, the Santenin independent pathway, exosomal pathways. And this is what we had done. We performed the exact same experiment, but this time we check for the loading of uh, flotillin, HSP17, CD9, and CD81. And you can note that while the PLD2 inhibitor significantly affects the loading of all these markers into the exosome, our sense of compound does not affect the loading of CD81, flotillin, HSP70, or CD9, which means that our compound seems to be very specific to the Santenin exosomal pathway. Finally, as you all know that uh, the, the, the exosome are able to to carry out uh, signaling proteins, cytoskeletal proteins, or ocon genes, we wanted to check whether our center of compound could affect uh, the loading of this kind of proteins. And this is what we have done. We check for the loading of fibronectin, EPCAM of CESARC, and others that are in supplementary data, actually. And we could notice that the center of uh, significantly affects the loading of CESARC. So it was not a surprise for us because in a previous study of our lab, uh, we have already shown that uh, SIRNA can affect the loading of CESARC. But more surprisingly for us, we also noticed that the scent of compounds that target the Santenin PD2 domain significantly affect the loading of EPCAM Okongin. So we conclude that the scent of compound can affect the exosome, Santenin exosomal pathway and also the loading of EPCAM and CESARC into the exosomes. So to summary our study, uh, thanks to our collaboration with enamine, uh, which provide us a lot of small chemical compounds, we could identify the compound 58. The EC15 of the compound 58 was not so good, but it was working on, uh, in our cancer cells assay. And uh, with the help of uh, the team of uh, Xavier Morani, we have performed uh, heat optimization and we could identify the scent of compound. So this compound was very more efficient uh, in cellulose, and we have demonstrated that the scent of can affect the activity of breast cancer cells, especially on cancer cell proliferation, migration, and in cancer stem cell function. 
But more interestingly for us, we could also notice that this compound, these santenin PDZ2 inhibitors, can regulate the santenin dependent cargo. We have demonstrated that this sent of compound was very specific to the santenin exosomal pathway, and it affects the CSR clothing into the exosome. Interestingly for us also, we have demonstrated that uh, it affects the loading of EPCAM. So EPCAM is a marker for multiple carcinoma. It is involved in the signaling cell migration, proliferation, and differentiation of multiple cancer cells. And recently, it has been shown that the exosomal EPCAM is a biomarker for ovarian and pancreatic cancers. And with this study, we suggest that EPCAM could be sorted to the exosome via the santenin machinery. But further investigation uh, must be performed, actually, to really confirm all this data. But anyway, thanks to all these results, we have demonstrated that the sentinel sandecon exosomal pathway seems to be a very important player in the cancer progression. So I would like to thank uh, all the people uh, who work uh, for this project. It was a project in collaboration with uh, two teams in the CRCM and with the company Enamin. So I would like to thank Dimitri and Maxime from the Enamin company. And uh, I would like to, to thank uh, the, the team of uh, Xavier Morley. And it was a real pleasure to work with people from another field. It was. Uh, very, very cool. And uh, of course, I would like to thank all the members of my team and especially Pascal, uh, which welcomed me in the team five years ago. And I also would like to thank uh, all the sponsors for the study. And uh, thank you for your attention. Well, thanks so much, Raphael, for sharing this with us. Um, I um, I want to I want to start by just asking you about what um, what is what is next here? What did you uh, what are you planning to do uh, with this compound or um, or are you going to develop, uh, you know, even more potent uh, inhibitors? So with this compound, actually, um, the, um, the optimization was not the, the last step at the first beginning. What we wanted to do is the growing step, actually. We wanted to add building block on the structure of this compound to, again, increase uh, the, the affinity of the compound and to reach actually the nanomolar range. But unfortunately for us, it was not possible and it didn't work. So with this compound, actually, this is the end. And uh, we will see if we will use another strategy to, to develop new compound actually, based on the crystallography of the protein. Yeah, and I just wanted to note, um, Pascal is here. So welcome, Pascal. If you, if you want to weigh in on anything at all, please, uh, please feel free to, to do so. So thanks for, thanks for joining us too. Uh, so we have a few questions that are coming in now in the chat box. And we'll start with my, uh, my institutional colleague, Norm Howey. Norm, you have a question about mechanism. There we go. Thank you, Ken. Uh, very nice study. I really enjoyed uh, hearing about it. Uh, and maybe I missed this early on. Or I, I, uh, can you try to describe or speculate the mechanisms by which Centenin regulates the cargo loading of EVs? That wasn't quite clear to me. It's thanks to the interaction with F6 and PD2 complex, actually, and also with Alix. It is involved in the formation of the multivesicular bodies. Sorry, I go back on my presentation. But it was about the cargo loading. Yeah? Correct. There's very clear differences in the cargo that's loaded when you, when you add your inhibitor. My question is, how does the protein itself affect cargo loading? And there we go. Okay, um, actually, uh, Santinin binds the Sandecan, and the Sandecan uh, uh, owns actually heparin sulfate uh, chains that are able to, to bind uh, specific uh, proteins such as F FGF. It allows the interaction between FGF and FGF receptors. And uh, thanks to this interaction, actually, the loading of specific uh, cargo actually is uh, allowed. Got it. Okay, thank you. Appreciate the explanation. Yeah, PDZ as well. I mean, the yeah. PDZ can also bring some cargo by direct binding, but otherwise, just by hooking on this syndicate scaffold, you can have a kind of bunch of cargo that could be synthetic independent. Hi, I was uh, looking at the exosome slides and I noticed that CD63 wasn't down. Was that expected based on your earlier? earlier genetic studies, or was that sort of a surprise that the drug didn't uh, reduce the amount of CD63 exosomes? 
Actually, it was a surprise because uh, in previous study of our lab, yes, when we do uh, SIRNA treatment, for instance, there is a decrease of uh, CD3 loading into the exosome. So we didn't expect this result, actually. But it could be also explained by the sensitivity of the compound, which is not so good. CD63 is, is a PDZ1 cargo normally. Also, yes. So. Tu peux it, faire appel à l'équipe quand tu. <laughs> Oui, oui, bien sûr. Uh, so, but it was a surprise at the first beginning. But uh, yes, it's it uh, as it, it binds the PD1 uh, domain, it can be an explanation. But also, the the inhibitor is pretty cool. But he, you can see that the, we 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 still have to use a, a high amount of compounds. So maybe uh, the new inhibitor could be fine. So you're thinking that the inhibitor is only affecting a subset of the cargos of syntenin? No, because actually the, our inhibitor specifically binds the, is a PDZ2 domain of syntenin, and the interaction between uh, syntenin and CD63 is uh, due to PDZ1, actually. It could be one explanation, but uh, it was surprising. Thanks for the question, Anne. Um, our next question takes us, I think, outside of the cell and then maybe back in again. So, uh, Bethany. Hi, very nice presentation. Uh, yeah, so my question was about the uptake of EVs. When you use this C58 compound or even the Sintoff compound, did you test whether that inhibits exosome absorption by the cells? No, we didn't do it yet. But uh, as long as uh, Santenin and Sandecan are involved in the internalization of exosome, that's something we should check, yes. But for this study, for this present study, we didn't try. So do you, uh, that's an, I, I find the question very interesting. Um, is there, is there a, a mechanism whereby an inhibition of Santenin might affect uptake? So yeah, Sintanin is as well implicated in the uptake. So we have a paper in press in, in scientific report on that. So because there are different mechanisms and yeah, one of them is that it supports the recycling of HSPG back to the plasma membrane. So it can have a kind of dual effect at one, on one side, boosting the production and on the, on the other side also boosting the uptake. So you know, the way we look at syntanin is that it's really a booster of exosomal exchange. But in the, in the biogenesis pathway, the syndicant is cleaved and it's mainly a CTF that you find on exosomes. While in the uptake, it recycles back full length to the plasma membrane. And, and the story is a bit more complicated than that, but yeah, I, I hope the paper will appear soon. <laughs> Right, we'll, we'll be on, on the lookout for that coming out soon. Um, Hojian Kai uh, has a question about, um, about effects on cells. Uh, it, it's just a detailed question. Probably it's a more technical question. So the inhibitor, you put it into the MCF7 cells. If this compound is going to inhibit the cell growth, so you can imagine if with the if that doesn't happen, then you have a different amount of cell produce the EVs and for comparison, it, 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 it's going to be really harder to compare, you know, treat it and, and, and the control, controlled. Uh, actually, we check for the level of the different, um, in, in the cell lysate for the expression of santinine, alix and everything. And uh, it is not affected by the compound. Um, a, a, Yes, um, santenin is involved in uh, cancer cell growth actually, and uh, in the paper we have uh, the, we have shown uh, um, uh, an effect on the tumorous sphere formation. But in 24 hours, the effect is very minor. We cannot see anything actually. For a 24 hours treatment, it does not affect the the proliferation of the cells. Uh, another thing is why you use this, uh, the 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 sphere. I mean, the sphere may be, the compound that may be harder to, to get it into the sphere, like a stem cell for, to inhibit it. Yeah, actually for the sphere formation essay, uh, I think it's more a delay uh, than something else because when we do the counting of the mammosphere, this is also based on the size of the mammosphere. 
And with the compound, the size of the mammosphere has lower. So, which means that I think our compound delay the formation of the mammosphere. Thank you. Um, now, Esther Naltatun. Yes, uh, thank you very much for presenting this nice uh, work. Uh, I was wondering, you showed now that this uh, SINT-OFF uh, component has effects on the uh, cancer cell functional phenotype and also on uh, the exosome release or loading. Um, is there a way to check whether there is really a causal relationship between these two, whether uh, the change in phenotype is really due to the, the, the change in uh, the exosome release or, fun or composition? You mean the cancer cell activity is due to the exosome release, you mean? Yeah, you showed now two things. Eh? You showed the effects of the yeah. SINT-OFF on the cancer functional phenotype, and you showed the effects of uh, uh, the component on uh, the exosomes. Uh, yeah. But would there be a causal relationship? So would the function of the cells change due to the fact that uh, the exosome release is changed? Yes, yes. For sure, it can be, and uh, for the revision of the paper, we have tried also to, to check for the effect of the exome on the cancer, stem, on the cancer activity, sorry, but it was really difficult to demonstrate and we were not able yet to do it, but it can be, yes. You're hunting for this, sir. Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you very yeah, much. For the best experiments. Uh, so we now have a question about EPCAM, and in fact, uh, Lucia Languino um, asked something about EPCAM, and um, Clotilde asked something about it, and Alex uh, Mitzialis also asked about it. So um, between the three of you, feel free to go ahead and, um, and, and uh, elaborate on this. Maybe we can start with Lucia. Yeah, thank you, Ken. Thank you, Rafael. Very nice talk. So before, it, so I'll start with my other question, Ken. So we go then to EPCAM for the three of us. So Rafael, the problem uh, is that most of the analysis that you have done on size and number of vesicle has been done without a density gradient. Is that correct? Uh, isolated. Yes. Yeah. So uh, have you tried it? Because maybe you will see different results by doing that. No, we haven't tried actually the density gradient. We only perform ultracentrifugations. And then have you confirmed that that C58 goes inside the cells? It's really permeable. Have you, for example, fluorescinated, you know, conjugated with the fluorophore and confirm it's going inside? No, never, but it's a small chemical compound, actually. All these small chemical, uh, the size is under 300 uh, kilodalton. Uh, they are very, very, um, they go into the cell very easily, actually. This is the reason why also we choose this strategy and not um, peptide inhibitors. Okay. Thank you, Rafael. Okay, I'll start with my question about EPCAM. So it was a very interesting when the people believe it was a marker for cancer, but the, including our own study have really confirmed that it's there also in normal cells, in normal vesicles, in the blood. So I, what do you conclude in a, from some of your study? And then we can go to, I think I see Clotilde as a more, a molecular question. Mine was more for diagnostic purposes, really. What do you think? For diagnostic purposes, uh, it's a good question. Uh, it depends on the carcinoma also, but uh, I, I mean, maybe for pancreatic cancer, because EPCAM is involved in pancreatic cancer, and uh, we do not this, uh, the study of this disease is really hard, so maybe we should investigate uh, in this cancer, but uh, Yes, yeah, I don't know. Widow prostate, a support prostate is really not a good marker for a cancer, but yeah. FYI. Okay, thank you then. I think Clotilde, if you want to follow up. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Uh, very nice talk, uh, Rafael. Um, yeah, my, my question is more on, on uh, and it's a bit related to what uh, Alex Mitialis is asking, actually, is, is on the actual uh, exosomal nature of the EVs you are following. So I, I wonder if the, you tried um, to analyze the intracellular distribution and also the MVB aspect of, of the cells treated with SINTOF. Uh, could it be that, that, I mean, do you think there are still exosomes that form, but they don't contain, um, they don't contain syntenin and alix and SDC4, or, do you or could it be that there are no exosome, no intraluminal vesicles in MVVs and there's no exosome formed anymore and, uh, 
and what you see as vesicles are only the plasma membrane derived vesicles. And I was actually surprised to see EPCAM uh, being affected by, by the compound because in my mind, EPCAM would have been more plasma membrane derived vesicle marker, but uh, your result seems to suggest that it could be more an exosome marker. Yeah, but uh, as long as santenin is a, a scaffold, a membrane scaffold uh, protein, actually, um, it could be uh, an interaction between all these complex ethylene. It can come actually uh, during the endocytosis. Um, for uh, I, what was the first question? Actually, I'm sorry. The intracellular localization of uh, yes. CD63 and EPCAM uh, in in uh, synth of treated cells is it different? Yes. We didn't check at all, actually. We only do the ultra centrifugation. We have done a rapid QL experiment, actually, and there were decreased, but uh, there was still some, uh, some, but it does not answer all your question, but uh, we don't know, actually. And by electron microscopy, you still have intraluminal vesicles in MVBs. You haven't checked that. We haven't we checked, haven't yes. Check. If, if you do the knockout of syntenin, there you have an effect on the CD63 pos ILVs. Uh, but the you showed the effect on the particle number, right? Yes, yes. So we think that this inhibitor does not affect the ILV budding because it does not affect the particle number. Well, I would think the other way around because my, well. When we do a ZyRNA, there we have clearly an effect on the particle number. No, but, but the particle number, I mean, there are many particles that can come from the plasma membrane. So to me, the fact that you don't affect particle number uh, suggests that, that you have still a lot of the particles coming from the plasma membrane that, that are released by your cells. Yeah. But okay, we, we showed in 2012 that syntenin controls the, the, the particles from endosomal origin. So, right. Yeah, so yeah, no, but that's that, consistent. That, then obviously our assumption is, is that an inhibitor of syntenin, yeah, but you're right. We could prove again and again this, but yeah. No, I but I, I would not expect an effect on the number of ILVs when I don't have an effect on the particle number. But this, I don't agree. I agree with you with the effect that would be specific of, of uh, well, I, well, we have to discuss again. No, no, it's okay, it's okay, it's fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm always trying to controversy because usually there is something to learn there. <laughs> No, because I mean, if, if it affects exosome release, then it should affect, I mean, it, 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 well, uh, you, it should you, affect the number of ILVs. Uh, there, there are many ways that syntenin can anchor the membrane. Even with lipids, it can anchor the membrane. So I'm not sure that if we inhibit just the PDZ2 membrane anchoring, that would suffice to to disconnect from, from ILV budding. You see what I mean? If you have no syntenin, there you miss the, the whole protein. You miss the hook to escort via Alix. You miss the, the binding. You, you, you miss this connection between escort and the membrane if you miss syntenin totally. But if you just inhibit its PDZ2 domain, I, I don't think that you don't, for example, affect the PDZ1 interaction with CD63. You wouldn't affect normally the lipid interactions, which might be with phosphatidic acid. You see what I mean? So well, I think that the, the chemical inhibitor of one PDZ domain does not necessarily has to mimic the SIRNA of the, of the protein. No, no, this I fully agree, but uh, well, that's why I'm trying to think whether- And, and it's because the data, we would have expected, I would have bet on, on, a dim, on a diminution of the particle release as we see for the SIRNA, for example, but yeah, the data are the data, so. But, what, what, may I ask, may I make a comment, please? Yes. It's, it, it, it's, it's very obvious that in these vesicles, the ratio between syntenin and its cargo is not one on one. It's not one to one. It's 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 
you, you can change a lot of the amount of cargo in the vesicles without increasing the number of without changing centennial. So there, it may be with the effect, with the affinities of the inhibitor as it is more now, you have larger effects on loading of the vesicles than on the actual formation, just because the inhibitor is not efficient enough yet for that. So it's yeah, a, no, that would, that's very interesting. We need single EV analysis now. <laughs> yes, in a sense, because it's it's clear that the ratio, the, the, the ratio, the stoichiometry between its cargo and centen is not one to one and very variable. It depends on, on that. And, and and exosome formation is is intrinsically closely related to, to, to cargo loading as well. But it, the, these are two two aspects of, of, of very closely interlinked phenomena, the, the, the loading and the bending. But clearly, it's, I think there are arrays of centenin that adapt to arrays of cargo also. So it's, um, uh, it, with the inhibitor as it is working now, it looks like, uh, well, we, we have more an effect on, on loading than on number. Yeah, thanks for the comment. So Clotilde, for that single particle um, analysis, what would, you, what would you want to look at? How would you want to set that up? Uh, well, now, uh, well, with a CD, well, CD63 uh, and, um, well, whether there is a CD63 capture and syntenin should not be in there or Alix and Syndican 4 should not be in there. I think in the exo view, they have uh, both syntenin and Alix now in the, in the assay. Um, so to, to confirm that now you have some CD63 vesicles that do not contain this, um, this, these components and whether they, they are CD9 positive. To me, that suggests that there are more vesicles that come from the plasma membrane and, and that, but, uh, but then, uh, and EPCAM, I'd like to see EPCAM, yeah, actually, <laughs> in this, uh, in this uh, sing single vesicle uh, analysis. Yeah, so indeed, the um, you, you can do the internal cargo with that platform now. Um, I'm not sure what if uh, you know we ha we actually haven't looked at whether that has an effect on on the 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 plasma membrane detection though. You know, because if you think about it, you're you're actually breaking open the the vesicle, and uh, so that the antibodies can have access to the inside. Um, so you're probably losing some. So I don't know if you can do you know EPCAM at the same time as something internal, but it, it's, it's possible. I, we just haven't, haven't looked at that yet. I'm not sure if the company has shared any results on that. I, I don't recall. Do they have EPCAM uh, antibody in the company? They do, yes. Lucia, you say yes? Oh, yes, yeah. yes, uh, they do, absolutely. We have uh, worked with them and they do have it on the chip. Yep. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, interesting possibility, okay. All right. Any other um, any other comments um, or questions from our audience or from the presenters? It uh, sounds like we have some. Alex, yes, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think my question about the EPCAM goes more than than um, clarified with the discussion. Uh, but it was basically uh, going into in terms of the mechanism of this com of these compounds and also. When we look at the markets in a heterogeneous populations, uh, do we know what's happening? And basically, my question has to do with like, there is uh, no syndecan on on the exosomes, right? If I'm not mistaken, after the treatment, the exosomes are depleted of syndecan. Am I correct? Uh, uh, we can see the CTF actually of the syndecan, only the the C-terminal part. Yes. Okay, but it's not there. Now, what happens on the cell themselves? On the cells, on the cells, uh, I didn't show you, but uh, it does the compound. Actually, you can, if you can see the presentation, when we treat with the center of the compound VT8, actually, it does not affect the cellular expression of the protein. Only CD63 is affected, but this is with the PLD2 inhibitor, actually, not with our compound. I'm sorry, I missed that the last sentence. Sorry. Uh, yes, we can see an effect of the PLD2 inhibitor. But it was not the purpose of our study, and uh, I, I'm not sure this is a problem of uh, of level. This is more a problem of uh, Western blood of translation or something else. But anyway, uh, yeah, okay, I understand. The reason that I say that is like uh, cells uh, syndicate knockouts in general, cells that have some kind of uh, decrease of syndicate on their 
uh, on their surface and depend and actually sometimes depend on the cell line they they're not doing so well in terms of adherence yes and uh, uh, for instance uh, yeah when we do uh, dip, uh, say RNA against sandecon one it really affects the, the shape of the cells and the proliferation and everything yes right so I was wondering if you know basically going back to how, how many of those particles are actually true exos and how many come from the uh, cell membranes like you can you can think of a cell which is a bit floppy and doesn't here well may produce more microparticles of the membrane just an idea. you know it's yeah. like uh, when we look at different markers we cannot assume of course that they all come from the same uh ev cell population so it could be that actually the adherence the perturbation of the adherence leads to more microparticles from the membrane may just an idea yeah yeah the the syndican uh, ctf at the membrane is very unstable huh? so we think that the one that goes to exosome that occurs in endosomal compartment oh and so lucia has posted here the um, article in which the EPCAM exoview result can be seen. Um, this is from Journal of Extracellular Vesicles uh, last year. Thanks, Lucia. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. All right. Well, I really appreciated the discussion today, too. Um, I think we've, we've had some good points that have been brought up. And uh, so thank you. Thank you, Rafael, for presenting this to us. Thank you for this very interesting work. Uh, thank you, Pascal, for joining. Um, and thanks, thanks to everybody. It sounds like we have something to look forward to as well with this new uh, uh, paper that's going to be coming out about um, about about uptake as well. Um, so stay tuned for that. And um, thank you all for joining today. I uh, look forward to seeing many of you next week as well. So take care of everybody. Bye now. Thank you so much. Bye, bye, bye everybody. Bye. Bye bye.